Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is a quick start tutorial to get you in the air as soon as possible with the Citation 10 by FlightFX. Today we have a two hour flight where we'll be cruising at 43,000 feet from Aspen, Colorado to John Wayne, Orange County, California. Let's get started. First, if you're in Microsoft Flight Sim 2024 and you are in walk around mode, make sure to always remove all of the flags and engine covers because that can cause issues later on. Let's go ahead and open up the front door and we'll go inside and hop into the cockpit. And before we start up, we'll go to our EFB here on the left and we'll go over to ground services. Here we can also turn off all our engine covers, chocks and our doors. We'll go ahead and connect our ground power and hit the home button. And now we'll go to the wait screen and you can actually import your SIM brief information here, but it's currently not working for me. So we'll do it manually. Based on my filed flight plan, we need 5,507,000 pounds of fuel. So I'm gonna take this here and just kind of scroll it over. And so we get in at Bog Park, that is good right there. We have six passengers on board today. All you need to do is click on each seat and then go down here. You can set the weight for each passenger individually. You do have to do this individually. So you can just kind of go through here and just set whatever random weight you want to set and whatever random seat you want to set it to. And down here for the luggage, I'm expecting 300 pounds of cargo. So we'll do that. And once we're done, we'll hit apply. And now we're done with the EFB. So we do have external power, uh, but the startup I'm going to show you is going to work whether you have external power or not. We're going to go ahead and click on external power on. And then we'll go down here, we'll hit the standby power to on. And then over here, we'll do emergency lights to armed. You'll see that red light come on. And then battery one and battery two. Next to the right of the battery, we have the ICAS. We'll click on that. Our screens will start to come to life. While those are turning on, we'll slide to the right side. And over here, you can find your lighting, your external lights. I'm just gonna turn my nav lights on so people around us know that we're in here and we're getting started. While we're on this side, over here on the right side panel, next to the co-pilot, we get our APU uh, panel. We'll go to APU master to on, APU uh, generator to on, and then APU start to the up position, and APU will start firing up. And once the APU is stabilized and powered on, we can go our bleed air to the up position. And now back over to the left side on the pilot seat, we'll get our avionics turned on. And it will move on to setting up our INS alignment. And to do that, we'll go down to our FMS here and hit position initialization. Click on that. Give it a few seconds. Then GPS one position will load. Just click load on the right side there and then click flight plan. Now we're going to go continue down to center pedestal here. Down here we have our nav switches. So go that to nav and nav. And that'll start your alignment. You can actually set up in the EFB how long you want your alignment to be, whether that be realistic or instant. And while we wait for our INS to align, this is when I like to set my radios up, get my IFR clearance and things like that. To do that in this aircraft, as you can see, we have our radio panels down here, which you can select and use. We're gonna use the FMC to do it. So if I click on nav and then tune, I now have my radio panel and I'm just gonna tune into the ATIS to get the weather. So one, two, zero, point four here in Aspen. Aspen Pitkin County Airport. Information X-ray. 0453 Zulu. And if you want to use this radio panel down here, just click on the uh, button next to the green comm number and then use this tune knob here to go to one, two, three, seven, five, which is going to be the frequency for clearance delivery. Once you have your frequency pre-selected, you just click on the arrow above it and then it switches over. Okay, clearance has been received. We're gonna go ahead and set our altimeter up right here. So 3025 is local altimeter. And we need to set that two times, one time there. And also down here on our main PFD, we can use this button down here to do that. 3025 is set. All right, now down to the FMC. To begin, we'll go to nav button. I'll go to sim brief and here's where you can put your sim brief ID if you want to import your sim brief flight plan for a much quicker way of putting your flight plan in. I'm gonna hit flight plan recall on the bottom right. That's gonna say request pending. Once that's done, that's gonna import our entire flight plan from simbrief.com. If you don't have a account yet, get one. All of these planes uh, usually support importing your entire flight plan. It saves you so much time. 
So now, we're gonna click on Departure, and our departure will be Runway 33. We'll click on the button next to Runway 33. The departure will be Pitkin 5, we'll click on that. And if we hit the next key, we can see our entire flight plan here and make sure everything is here. One thing that is missing is our actual arrival and approach information, which you can do later on in the flight, but I like to get it out of the way here in the beginning. To do that, we'll click on Nav again. We'll click on Arrival. We'll select our approach runway, if you know what it is. For us, that's runway 20 right. We'll expect the RNAV Zulu runway 2 right, 20 right via J word, but we will use uh, the ILS uh, frequency to get in there. Our standard terminal arrival or star will be the Disney 6 and our transition onto the Disney 6 is going to be on the next page. We'll click next and go to Nate. And once we're done and we're happy with that, we'll hit activate. And here I'll put in my passenger amount, which we have six passengers on board today's flight to John Wayne from Aspen. For cargo, we have 300, 300. We'll drop that right there. You can also just hit sync to EFB and we'll hit confirm initialization. Now we'll continue to the takeoff page. So click takeoff. Here you'll put your weather information, starting off with the temperature here on the left. For us, that is actually already correct. But if it wasn't, I can click like 16 here and type right there. Altimeter is again 3025, so 30 decimal. Do not forget the decimal. 25, drop that right there. And then our winds are actually var variable here uh, at five knots. So just put zero slash five and then next. There's no rain in the area, so it's a dry runway, so leave it as is. Next. And we'll be taking off flaps 15, confirm in it. And on the next page, you can see your V speeds. And so that is it for the FMC. It is time to get the engines started. So here in the very back of the center pedestal is your parking brake. Make sure that parking brake is indeed set. We'll go to our EFB to ground services and make sure the main door is closed and the chocks are removed. Since our AP was on, we don't need the ground power anymore, so we'll disconnect that as well. And then we'll get our seatbelt signs on for our passengers. So seatbelt signs on and our anti-collision lights so that people around us know that we're about to start our aircraft. And now for the engine start, a very easy, simple engine start in this aircraft. All you need to do is click on this engine start RH for the right engine. Look up here, you'll see N2 is going to rise. Once it gets past 10%, you can go down here and click just on the bottom of the base of a throttle. That'll put the throttle into throttle idle and introduce fuel into the igniters and fire up the engines. And once that engine is stable, you repeat the process on the left engine. Once again, just click on the black button, LH here under engine start. Click that into rise 10%. Once it hits 10%, clearance to Boeing Field. click the base of the throttle and the throttle idle. And engines are starting. All right, we have a good start on both engine one and engine two. We're gonna now move down to our flaps and set our flaps for 15. We're gonna set the stab trim or pitch trim, which is right here. And need to make sure you have a uh, pitch trim mapped or bound to your yoke or joystick. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do uh, up trim here till we get into the green for takeoff. There we go. And now the engines are on, we no longer need the APU, so we'll go ahead and do APU stop. And APU bleed off. And we'll shut down the APU. I like to pop on the auxiliary pump. Also here in the front right corner is your passenger or cabin altitude. Uh, we'll be cruising at 43,000 feet, so I'm going to scroll this up until... So the, the outer layers here are the altitude of the aircraft. So I'm going to go until we get around 43-ish. And so our cabin out to actually uh, go up to that when we're up at that height. And while we're over here, we'll also hit the pedostatics, both left and right. And if you need it, you can turn a windshield heat on right below it as well. All right, with that done, we'll uh, turn the yokes back on and do a quick flight control check to make sure everything is working. So forward, center, up, center, left, and right. Flight control is free and correct. Before we taxi, we'll go ahead and switch over to ground and make sure we are squawking T-A-R-A -A here. And then back here on our throttle, we'll click on a little button on the left here, the thumb switch, 
that's our toga switch if you look at our main pfd we'll see that it says toto and today we will be using the auto throttle system up here make sure it's set to fms with that we are ready to taxi our taxi lights are back here behind our throttle so we'll turn our taxi light on and release our brakes Okay, we're approaching the runway here in Aspen, runway 33. We'll do a couple final checks just to make sure that I didn't miss anything and that you didn't miss anything. So looking in the middle screen here, uh, you see where it says hydraulic aux pump on. If you have text here that's white, then that means you're good. Like, it's not a big deal. If it's in blue or yellow, then you might want to go back and make sure you didn't miss something because you don't want blue text or yellow text. Also here on the left screen here, you see we have our V speeds now showing up, which is nice. We also have our FMS1 selected as our main navigation. If it's not, right above here, you can click on Nav, and that switches between VOR and VOR2, and then FMS goes to FMS1. You could also scroll this over to FMS1 if you want to track FMS1 or ADF or whatever. So make sure that is selected correctly. Other than that, if you follow along, we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and get our takeoff clearance and get out of here. November 116 Bravo, Aspen Tower, runway 33, winds 190 at 8, RNAV Boyette, cleared for takeoff. RNAV Boyette, uh, runway 33, cleared for takeoff, citation 16 Bravo. Alright, we're ready to go. Land lights are going to come on down here. One time, two time, and then back over here on the right side, we'll get our anti-collision, our strobe lights turned on, recognition lights on, and flow lights on, and we're good to go. Let's go. Oh yeah, one other thing before we take off, uh, they actually put these really cool secret buttons or knobs here for altitude and heading, uh, so you don't have to reach all the way down here to manipulate your altitude and heading, it's pretty inconvenient, and you have to take your hand or your head away from like what's in front of you, so we'll go right here, and I'm going to select my altitude, so I'm going to go over the altitude like screw, use my scroll wheel, and go up to 11,000 feet, which is what they told us to climb up to. So once I get there, that is, I keep overshooting, but that's good. Also, the heading is the same way. We can scroll with the heading and put this on runway heading for departure. So I really like that feature so that way we don't have to look all the way down. Now, if you have this on your hardware, it's not a big deal. Okay, ready to go. I'm going to push the throttle all the way to the front, all up to Toga. Release the brakes and power set. I like to put on a little bit of forward pressure right there, but there is the airspeed is alive, 80 knots. And here it comes V1. Rotates. A little bit of back pressure there on the yoke. And she comes off the ground nice and smooth. Once you see that vertical speed go up, positive rate, right, gear up, put your gear up. Very nice. Pitching for about 15 degrees. We're gonna push the nose back down or use our trim to do so. We have a lot of terrain ahead of us, but we should be good to go there. Still flying it by hand at the moment, but pretty soon we're gonna hand it off to the autopilot. All right, we up. And if you wanna learn more about how to use like the autopilot, how to do the approach, how to customize your MFD screens, definitely check out my full flight tutorial. But hopefully you enjoy the aircraft. And until next time, remember you have three choices. Give up, give in, and give it all. You got peace, love, and God bless you. I will see you guys next time, next video. I'm out.